Hello. Hi, dear. How are you? I'm so good. So good to see you. I know you too. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we have a lot of questions. So I'm going to okay. get right into it. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> So that okay. we can try to get as many of these <laughs> answered as possible. All okay. right. So I already introduced you. Everybody already knows you anyway because they were more than likely <laughs> already following you before they even knew who I was. Um, so this is the lovely Aisha CRNA, Dr. Captain. Wait, Captain? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so my friend James, he always calls me Dr. Captain Allen. So I really don't know what... <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll go with it. All right. So question number one. As a new grad nurse, I'm graduating in five days. When should I start the HSPS process? Yeah. Okay. Graduating nurse. So when I started the process, when I was applying to CRNA school, like at the same time, um, and sometimes recruiters are like, oh, you're not very far along. Like you can always start your application um early because you're getting like medical records you're getting your resume together you also have to do a letter of recommendations for hpsp as well um i kind of use the same people that i use for my crna school application so i think also doing that at the same time you can get those same people to do the same thing for the hpsp application um because it's a, it's an application process so you're applying to a board like everyone else mm -hmm. they go through your resume um what community services have you had, like all of that stuff. So I think it's beneficial to do it at the same time that you're applying to school. So when you say applying to school, so this person is about to graduate as a brand new ICU nurse. So should they okay. be thinking about this right now? So graduate to be an ICU nurse or like mm -hmm. a... Yeah, like she's... Oh, like graduating their BSN. Yes, correct. Okay. I think so. Like put it on your radar. Um, but... Um, like maybe figuring out where your um, recruiters are, but you need to just get your ICU experience first because you don't really submit your packet until you are accepted to CRNA school. So that's a big point to know. Like you can start working on it, but they're not going to submit you to the board unless you are accepted into a school and you have that letter to send in. Okay. But you can start gathering everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, next question. How do you balance your work, social media life, business, and stay yeah. sane? <laughs> okay. So I'll tell you, when I was in school, I did not have a very organized structure like everyone of my, other my classmates. Like, I kept a lot of things in my brain, and that's not the best way to do things, honestly. Um, so right now, I'm using – actually, I have it right here – I'm using this thing that's called a bullet journal and you just like, it's just a journal you get that's plain and you can like tailor what you're tracking. Um, you have your monthly calendar um, that looks like this. And one thing that really has helped me now is I'll go back to like my days is splitting up each day, choosing the top three things that I want to do for that day. Like the most important thing um, because what our, well, I'll talk to myself. I used to find myself writing these lists down, sometimes even writing things that I already did, or like just writing these like minuscule little things that aren't really, I'm like, I'm not really accomplishing things. I would like write down on the top of things I need to do. I would split up personal business and work, um, like literally personal business work, um, write those things out that I want to do for that day. And um, on the monthly page, I would write out the things I want to accomplish for that month. Um, like January was getting my oil changed, getting my tiny home insurance, getting, um, moved in, like just stuff like that. And so really kind of like splitting up every single day and then giving myself grace to not accomplish the list. That was also something that has helped me like just be okay with letting your life flow. Cause I spent so much time like figuring out when am I going to get to school and what's next? So, um, it's slowing down a little bit to allow yourself to live through these moments. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, and then you do yoga, which I'm yes. sure everybody knows. So I think that's really important to um, mm -hmm. touch upon because you're, you know, self-care is so important, especially when you've got your hands in a bunch of 
different things and trying to, yeah. you know, be on here and do your glasses and finish school and move across the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's uh, a lot. yeah. Okay, so that's, yeah, really important. Um, I think a reason why I was able to thrive, and I say I thrived through CRNA school, of course, you have highs and lows, is because I maintained myself to things that I love to do and made me happy. And I took time and took myself out of that environment that you know could be like really negative or people complaining all the time and self pit like all that BS. I took myself out of that and I did things like I went to spin class, I went to yoga, and I challenged my mind mentally outside of school. Mm -hmm. So I think that's so important with when whatever you're doing, CRNA school, anything, reserve time for yourself. And then to bring back the social media part, um, people. I think social media has kind of gotten a rep to be kind of like about followers and fake and you have to post content and have this perfectly curated feed um, that I do not abide by any of that. If you look at my feed, it's random. It's whatever the heck I want it to be. And so I don't really look at Instagram as a job. So mm -hmm. people like, it's not something like I balance. There's days and weeks where I just worse not posting. Mm -hmm. um so i think that's really a distinction to make for my page you're not gonna find some cookie cutter bs like it's whatever i feel like putting on that day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right okay next question how challenging were the physical aspects of the air force okay so as a former college athlete i'm gonna be honest and say that it is not that bad um i'm used to like running in the dead of heat and my coach saying you pass out before you die so to me it was like summer camp um ready <laughs> so serious um you run a mile and a half and you do push-ups and you do sit-ups and if anyone followed me on here you knew like i was training for it up mm -hmm. until the point of me going so you have time to prep they also train you while you're there there's people who were not working out before they got there um so you have pt there but it's never anything that's like the movies where you're working out for hours and hours. Like that's so not real. <laughs> like that's not a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not like dying and like there's like black flag, which means you can't go out in the heat. It's too hot, too cold. Like there's so many times our PT got canceled. Um, well, this is the Air Force. Again, let me speak for the Air Force. Air Force takes care of their people. I don't know what the experience is for everyone else in other branches, but like there was one day it was raining outside really, really bad. And we finished our whatever we're doing and there was buses sitting there waiting for us. And we're like, what are these buses for? It was to take us back to the dorm so that we like weren't drenched in, water, in rain. Nice. Okay. Right. So it's just like, it wasn't bad. It's not like crazy. It's not, I didn't go to boot camp, which is like enlisted. So it's different. I went to, yes. Yeah, so I went to officer school versus, okay. yeah, boot camp. So like, that they're trying to train you to be leaders rather than training you to be followers. So there's a difference with that as well, like in making decisions and being independent and all of that. Um, so yeah, it's not rigorous as rigorous as you think it is. And then right now, like, because I passed and did well in my PT test before I have an entire year until I test again. And I'm not man like, there's no mandatory PT or anything like that. Like I'm an adult. I work out when I want to. And when my PT test comes up in a year, I better pass it. So that's really, that's all it is. How old was the oldest person in your, um, um, it, like 50 something. He was, um, a mental health doctor. Okay. Fifth, like 50 something crushed his PT test. I will never forget him. I'm going to post a picture of him, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no, he's, yeah, he is. I won't even tell you, he almost beat me in the mile and a half. And I was like, nope, not oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow but yeah like there's the age if you are specialized the age goes up it's not like this 20 year old like limit if you are very specialized like crna medical health mental health you can get you can even get waivers so even if you think you're too old just apply they can mm -hmm. waive you i've i've always thought about doing it and now that i've lost weight and i'm actually like Able Come to on, do girl. <laughs> it's a $250,000 bonus. $250? Okay. So <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I have your recruiter's information and, and yes. I screenshotted it. So yeah, I yeah. was reaching out to them. Aww. All right. Next question. So, what's your 
biggest and best advice about officer training OTS? OTS, yeah, officer training school. Biggest advice is to kind of treat it like, okay, so once you go to, three, to CRNA school, you know how to take critique. You know that life just is not about you. It's about the patient. You show up, you do your job, and you start up for another day. That's the same type of mindset that you will, you'll be successful if you have that mindset. It's not, it's not going to last forever. Um, mm -hmm. Waking up at 4.30 is nothing to me because you do that. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the food was not the best. Um, there's days I did not eat. But again, there's still food in front of me. Like, it, it's, it was a privilege. I learned a lot. Be open to learning. Um, be open to trying something new. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Same, same thing, like, we talk about for CRNA school. Um, and, yeah, just being open and willing, a good learner and a good listener. And that's six weeks? No. So it used to be five weeks for medical professionals, and then they moved it to eight weeks for everyone. Oh. Like, everyone's going to get this work. Everyone needs to be on the same page type thing. Excuse me. So, yeah, it's eight weeks. Okay. But, you like, know the what? last part is really fun. The like last you're outside. Part? The last part of it is it's pretty fun. Like you're outside, like doing. But the the month the military spends a lot of money on preparing its folks. So you are doing like deployments, but you're like problem solving, and you're doing like these games in the woods, and like you're trying to get back to this waypoint. It's it's really fun, actually. Um, kind of I felt like GI Jane. <laughs> All right, I love GI yeah. Jane. <laughs> you know, I actually thought yeah. of something. I don't know if I can join. Um, because I've had the weight loss surgery, I think I would have to get a special waiver. A waiver? If can, yeah, if I can remember mm -hmm. the right thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there's always a waiver. Always a waiver. They need us, so I would not be surprised. <laughs> They'll be like, what? You good. Okay. Right, well, you're good, you. girl. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Next question. What would you do differently in CRNA school if you had to do it all over again? What would I do differently? Hmm. I think that I would, I was going to say I would speak up a little bit more, but I, I already spoke up a lot. Um, I think I would say sooner um, because there were situations that I knew were not right at, like, at how people treated me and talked to me. And I was in this mindset of like, you're just here, you take your medicine like you're gonna have good and bad days and I would just like accept it as what the experience was gonna be when um that's not exactly how what you have to do um but other than that like I'm very happy with the decision that I made to go to um Duke I met you through going to Duke mm -hmm. if anyone doesn't know Crystal was my preceptor at my like second clinical site I think um so that's how we met um but yeah I had a great clinical experience um she was amazing. Let me just tell y'all. Like, like, uh, I, I don't even know. That was maybe my second or third week there on that assignment. Uh -huh. And um, next thing I know, they're like, oh, you're getting a student. And she walks in. I don't even remember what kind of case I was in. And she was like, can I do X, Y, Z? And I'm like, do you know how to? And she's like, yeah, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> And she, she came into that OR, and I remember asking at the end, I was like, what year are you? Like, are you about to be done? And you were new still. Yeah. Like, you were like, new. yeah. And you were just so good. And I remember thinking, like, she's, she's awesome. She's going to be, she's already better than I was at that point in my program. Thank but, you. My program is integrated, and, and I've said that before. I think the mm -hmm. front moments are just better, um, and just personal opinion. But you, you, yeah. you were amazing then. Thank so you. I had no <laughs> Thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah. Thank you. All right. What were the age ranges of people in your CRNA program? Um... I had, I believe she was 35. That was the oldest. I had a very young class compared to even like the classes that are above and below me. We, I had a young class. So from like 35 to the youngest was 25. 
Um, but in like Teddy's class, I don't know if you guys know who Teddy is, um, Teddy Jam for me on Instagram. He, his class was a little bit older. I think he had someone like closer in their forties. Mm -hmm. Um, but Duke, I, what I've noticed is they like the young, the young people because they're like adapt. I think this is, you know, speaking from my opinion, I think you've spent less time learning like specifically ICU things yeah and you've been trying to get to this goal and you're like ready to go so yeah that's what I've noticed yeah I think a lot of the North Carolina schools are like that mm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'll say um <laughs> okay because I I did not get accepted into any of them I had to go to New Jersey to finally go but oh okay anyway okay. Next question, <laughs> what top three specific pieces of advice on getting into an ICU as a new grad do you have for someone? Okay, so I, disclaimer, I did not get into the ICU immediately after CRNA, or uh, after graduating. I was trying, but I just didn't. And so what I did, and this may be unconventional, is I accepted the first job that I found. Um, first one because I need I didn't want to have any lag time in between me graduating because my ultimate goal was getting to anesthesia school mm -hmm. so I luckily the first one I accepted was an ICU step down fell into my lap um it was a night position if you guys know I don't like nights mm -hmm. um but as soon as I accepted that position I was still looking for ICU positions at the same time like I would be calling recruiters emailing recruiters um, I would do drive-bys and show up to managers' doors um, after my night shift in the morning because bright and early. Um, and another way is to become a CNA or a nursing assistant on an ICU floor if you can. Um, and then, you know, just be really good at your job because every job that you take is an interview. Mm -hmm. So if you're a good CNA, they're going to be like, okay, you passed your NCLEX. We have a position. Why don't you come here? Um I've heard of people using their ICU internships during school to do this. Um, maybe using your connections with any professors that you have, if you know that they are, um, if they work in an ICU. Um, and I think also just being resilient and continuing to try and being an annoying. I was annoying. I, I know that recruiters are tired of me. They're I like, just others. get her a job. Yes, hurry up. <laughs> And um, I left my unit <laughs> six months after, and I was like, bye, cardiac surgery too, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I just, just be persistent wow. and um, be willing to move. Just like I said for CRNA school, be willing to go somewhere mm -hmm. that is open, go out of your comfort yeah. zone um, and just keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's what I always tell people. If you can move, um, if that is something, like if you're not tied mm -hmm. down in one spot, and you have to stay in that area because the jobs are out there. Um, right. And just, there. just try to get an ICU internship, even if it's, you know, halfway across the country. Yeah, yeah. just go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. All right, next question. Um, you kind of touched on it already, but um, now that you've graduated, would you choose Duke again? I would. I would. I would choose Duke again. Um, it allowed me to really experience, like I've experienced life up until my age with still yet another idea and lens of like, no matter where I go and, you know, I'm going to, or no, if I get this top education and I get this and this, I'm going to be treated with this type of respect and people are going to listen to me and da 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 da. Duke taught me that that is not true and um i'm very thankful for the experiences that i had there um, i made amazing connections through duke um, i had amazing clinical experiences all over north carolina to the point of me walking into a military base yesterday charting on military system just them just throwing me in there and leaving and i was able to to be fine because I had worked at a military hospital, at a military base, did OB, without that experience, I would have floundered. Like, I don't know how they trusted me to be, like, they don't know, they don't know my clinical experience. <laughs> so um, I, that was fun. And then being at a research facility 
and really understanding and not DMP is not for everybody. It's not necessary, but for the changes that I want to make to healthcare and medicine, um, I learned a lot about that process and how I can implement it at hospitals. So no, I would not, I'm also not a person that lives with regret. Um, I think everything that happens mm -hmm. for a reason and mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm really happy with my choice, but caveat um, Duke just went through a lot of changes with faculty. Um, there's one person there that was there when I was like in school. I don't know how anybody else teaches. I did not go through any of their schooling. So I cannot vouch for what you're receiving at this point. So that's a huge disclaimer right now. FYI. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to know. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're somebody who doesn't follow me, I have done a live with a current Duke SRNA, and it's on my YouTube channel. Abby. Um, yep, with Abby. So you can go to my YouTube channel and catch those previous lives that I've done if you want more information on, like, the now of Duke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Advice for someone's significant other. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So this person is in CRNA school. What advice do you have for their boo? Their boo. Um, realize that your person is going through something that you don't understand and will never understand. Um, you are going to be put on the back burner. And your person is walking into an environment every single day where they are now, um, I won't say under the control, Every breath, every word that comes out of their mouth, um, every thought that they have to have needs to be as astute and near perfect as possible so that they, that they could have a good eval for the day. And going through that every single day is stressful. Um, there's no other really field that goes through that, that I know of, um, especially on a nursing, with that whole nursing umbrella of like, kind of being nitpicky and somewhat judgmental um again not everyone um so i think really realizing that there's a time there's school there's studying there's clinical there's boards and then there's coming home to real life and figuring out how to manage all of that so just um being supportive the best way that you can and helping them also include you in on things like setting out a schedule all of that mm -hmm. um I think Rihanna on here on Instagram, she does a really good job. She has a family and she just adopted, she adopted a child and she fostered pets, um, or sorry, she fostered a child, fostered pets and she has a husband, she runs a business. She does a really, really good job, right? <laughs> she has a really, really good job about, was that your doggy? Um, about everything, <laughs> so. Boy, go lay down, go, go, out, um, out, out. <laughs> no, you're good. Um. So I think it's just finding, being able to work together to find a balance is important. Mm -hmm. And go um, visit the school, all of that, and mm -hmm. go to an in-house, like really see what your significant other is about to be doing. Yeah. And um, I know Abby had talked about it before with their move and mm -hmm. him starting a new job. And they're both nurses, nursing backgrounds, mm -hmm. but her main focus is school and that's the only yeah. not the only stressor but that's her stressor you know right. she didn't realize that he was stressing about a new job to you know moving and just being away from family as well so you definitely need to have those conversations with your significant yeah. other if a move is involved too if ch child care is involved um you know and if you can meet somebody else who's already in the program and married see if mm -hmm. that person's spouse can talk to you and just let yeah, you know that's that, huge yeah that's yeah. how it's gonna be because it's gonna, gonna suck gonna... yeah it's gonna suck regardless <laughs> Um, either gonna do it or you're not so figure out a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. all right how do you like your new job um so first day was yesterday of actually giving anesthesia and i love it i love anesthesia it's like i'm so happy that i chose this profession um and i can't believe that we get to do this every day and get paid to do it you know it's it's, it's fun um and it's really rewarding to like immediately help people yeah mm -hmm. i like it good 
Um, would you recommend the HSPS? Obviously, you would because you <laughs> gave us all so, the recruiter's information. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would recommend it conditionally because first thing is you need to realize that if you're doing HPSB, you are in the military. Mm -hmm. And at, you're an officer in the military. You're, and something that was like beat into my head, not really beat, but you are an officer first before I'm like a nurse anesthetist. Okay. And the needs of the Air Force will always come first. So if the Air Force was like, actually, it was probably what happened because nurse anesthetists are really needed. But if the Air Force was like, hey, we need you to be a, go clean the, be a cleaner that would be my job. Like, I would not have any say about it. Um, so just realizing that you are at the mercy of what the world throws at America because mm -hmm. the, our U.S. Air Force is the most lethal Air Force in the world. And so if there's a war and they need you, you're going, you're deploying. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you're aware of those things that you may have to do. Yeah. But as far as like, everything else and the what you get the autonomy as a crna and the money and the stipend absolutely so you did not graduate with any loan debt correct or just a little bit so i graduated with my first year of debt because okay. i was not accepted excuse me i was not accepted immediately so okay. i applied was not accepted applied again they were like oh yeah you got it and i was like well, actually i don't know if i want to do this based off some changes that happened and um then i went to visit a crna in the air force and i was like all right actually yes i do so i accepted and then you, they start paying you from that time you accepted it and it happened to be started the second year so years two and three are paid for okay all right well that's still significant it is it is <laughs> i have total with undergrad and this i have a hundred and forty thousand okay yeah you get that down quick. it is what it is mm -hmm. yeah especially if i see what you're doing yes i will <laughs> Whew, girl i can't wait to be done <laughs> <laughs> all right so you said you're given a lot of autonomy so far I, obviously mm -hmm. yesterday was your first day but given a lot of autonomy in comparison to civilian crna which i know you don't really have that comparison other than as an srna um, right. Would you say um, one has shown to be better than the other so far? Yeah. Um, as And again, it depends on, like, where you are in the country. Because um, I saw some places where CRNAs were in the civilian world were, were just as independent as military CRNAs, but they're few and far between, or you're very, very rural. Mm -hmm. um, but in the military, you're doing your blocks. No one came in my, there's no MD in my room. There's no like, hey, what do you want to do for this case? This is your patient and you go do everything. You figure like, oh, the surgeon, like the surgeon literally asked me to do a tap block for my um, case. And I was like, oh, granted I'm new. And I was like, mm, I will go ask someone. And, you know, this place has been so like, they're like, yeah, we'll teach you. Absolutely. Say yes. And so that now the next time someone asks for a tap lock, you're just going to do it yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're just doing everything. There's no anesthesiologist. Like, their anesthesiologists are here, but they mm -hmm. have their own rooms. So it's like both of us right. here working. Right. Together. Um, do, do you get breaks? Did anybody come and break you or no? Mm -hmm. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, James, like actually. You guys don't know. Oh, James. okay. Oh, James. I didn't realize. I didn't realize you were at the same place. Okay. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, we work together. He's one of the reasons I came here because I wanted to have a friend that I knew. Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I get a breakfast break. I got a lunch break, afternoon oh. break, and I see everyone leaving. Like they wanted me to do my full case, but like I guess I would have left at one or two had it been like a regular day or like regular. <laughs> but I'm new, so they wanted me to do everything. But everyone, there's people leaving at like one, eleven. Because once the surgeries are done, like, you're just done. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you do have to take call there, correct? You do have to take call, but there's a lot of contractors here. So, okay. like, you maybe I think you do call once a month, once or twice a month. Um, and the reason why there's a lot of contractors here is because with the Air Force mission, 
we are deployable and we if we leave who's going to be the one doing the work here so they hire a lot of contractors and just like anywhere else like if you're contracted or you're the traveler you know you do a bulk of this the work like you're, they're paying you a premium mm -hmm. so you're mm -hmm. going to be doing a lot of work so they, so you're, they saying, stay. you're saying civilian contractors correct okay. Okay. yeah civilian okay. contracts mm -hmm. okay yep all right I don't work weekends uh, often. Like it's, it's pretty. I'm off. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna contact the recruiter. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next question. Did you take the GRE, organic chemistry, or fig or physics? If so, do you recommend taking them for someone who wants to apply to CRNA school? Took the GRE, but a lot of schools are getting rid of it. I use Princeton Review to study. If anyone's interested. I did not take organic chemistry, specifically applied to schools that did not require it, um, aka Duke and VCU, <clears throat> that were near me. Um, and then as far as physics, no. I took physics, like, as part, I think it was part of my nursing degree, like an extra science. It was like physics 101. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as taking extra classes for CRNA school, make sure that they actually add value. Um, or if you need them to increase your science GPA. Like, I had someone ask me if they should take biostatistics, and I was like, for what? Like, it, yeah. <laughs> and it was just to help my resume. I'm like, no, like, that doesn't, lo that doesn't look like anything. Yeah. Um, so take everything for a reason. If it's graduate, let it be patho or something like that. Or even mm -hmm. ask your school and say, are there classes that I can take ahead of time for your program? And then you can show them that you can handle the work. Yeah, that's what I always recommend people do. Yeah. Um, reach out to the programs if you know which programs you want to apply to and just straight up ask them, like, this is what I did in undergrad. Yeah. If you got, you know, a C or a D and whatever, they may say, oh, yeah, you should probably retake that. Um, right. But most of them do want to see that you can do graduate level work. So definitely make sure um, you at least take some graduate level classes. Um, any recommendations on building your resume? Um, so I think I have a resume video on my YouTube. If you guys don't know, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have, I actually think my resume is up there. So you're more than welcome to like, you know, steal it. Um, but as far as like recommendations, your resume is the first look at what you have been doing for the past year, two years, whatever. So you need to frame it and put everything on there so that it makes sense and that they can see maybe your sense of urgency to get into CRNA school. Um, have you been jumping around from job to job? Where have you been working? Um, you know, is your hospital a busy? People kind of get hung up on level one, level two. I don't really think that matters so much as like what you're physically actually doing in the hospital. And going to a lot of the conferences, the educational conferences that I've been to, um, the resumes are, are on a point system a lot of times. So are you volunteering? Maybe like half a point. Um, or you, do you have your CCRN? A lot of times they say that that's optional, but now everyone has it. So I would just go ahead and get it. Um, but again, just like telling the story of what you have been doing so that they know that you have been working toward this. Um, I think also being as succinct as possible, um, but also describing like, what did you take care of certain types of patients? Was it multidisciplinary? Um, did you, did you take part? Did you work on the unit? Whatever the J Co. you know, like just different types of um, committees, yeah. um, making sure that there are no spelling errors because nothing is worse than you, them looking at that and be like, okay, clearly you didn't care to check this. So um, making it not look cluttered, not sending five pages in of a resume, because mm -hmm. like, what, you're not that important for you to have five pages. <laughs> and they don't want to read it. They don't want to read They're it. Not, like a right. program director, okay, if they have to like- Period, they don't want to read it. No, they're like, no. <laughs> Next. And I will say this, think about the psychology of what you're putting down and what you're giving your the committee. No one wants to read five pages, like you said. Two, 
if they if you submit a personal statement and it's like oh i want to be a crna because i love the autonomy and i worked in an icu and like they've heard that before mm -hmm. that's boring like you just need to really put yourself into your application um no one else should be able to hand your application to them and pass it as theirs that's how specific it should be for you and yeah. personal yeah agree okay i'm gonna save this question for last okay um, <laughs> <laughs> so next question are you able to choose your location as a military crna so for the air force there are um, six big hospitals that you can choose from. They want to put you at a big hospital because anywhere else you're like the only provider and that's not the smartest thing to do with a new grad. Um, mm -hmm. that also, people were they were doing that and people were getting burnt out and leaving and they want to retain people. So you can go through one of six places, um, Alaska, California, um, San Antonio, Las Vegas, um, Florida, Ohio and like Washington DC area and you rank what you want to do again it's a ranking you don't get to choose really but they do especially for CRNAs want to take into account what you want because they want you to be happy and um you rank it on a list of like one to five and they'll take it into account um everyone that I know as a CRNA has gotten their like one through three choices okay and um how long are you there for Three years. So my initial, it's a year for year repayment for this program. So I'll be here for three years. Unless I volunteer okay. to go to Germany or something. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh. oh, so that's yeah. an to volunteer. So that's after volunteer year, deployment. Yeah. Yes, type thing. So after a year, you can like, I could go anywhere really. But like my, I'm here for three years if I want to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or if they said um, you need to move. What did you say? <laughs> or if they were like, no, actually, we need you somewhere else. Oh. Then, yeah. But, like, everyone that I've heard, you're, you're there for three years. What were your other choices? Your um, personal. Yeah. I actually originally had Alaska. And really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was yeah. gonna ask, does anybody ever put Alaska? But clearly Everyone puts Alaska. That's why I didn't really? get it. Yes. It's Why? such a it's Alaska. <laughs> One, Alaska's beautiful. Like if you guys know don't know, I love national parks and I love being outside. Yes. yes. So it's beautiful. One, they have everything there at, at the base um, that I was gonna go to, Elmendorf. Um and the it, the hospital there is like really, really nice apparently. Um okay. like someone from my from my before I got here, he was here at Nellis he went to Las Vegas. And so the recruiter actually was like, sorry, sis, you're probably not going, not the recruiter, the person that does nans and needs and all that, was like, you're probably not gonna get Alaska. Like, do you wanna rework your order? And I was like, yes, thank you for telling me. Remove Alaska, Nell's number one, then let's go, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, you know I don't like the cold. So that's yes. the only thing I hear when I hear Alaska. So I it's not always cold to, though. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still here. So I can't I would not put Alaska. But to each That's their so own. Funny. I'm glad there's people like you. <laughs> yep. See, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So this is the last question that I have on here. And then it looks okay. like we'll have some time to get to these questions. Yeah. So uh this person obviously followed you throughout the the time that you were SRNA, and they noticed mm -hmm. that you had some issues as an SRNA at your program. Um, yeah. What were those issues, and how was your relationship with your classmate? Yeah. Oh, I see why you say this one is spicy. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's get into it. Um, I'm a CRNA now, so... Um, <laughs> talk about it there and everywhere it's black history month too so let's really talk about it um yes. there are always racial issues and racial tension whether or not people know that they exist whether or not people know that they convey these racial tensions um i did my entire doctoral work on implicit bias in healthcare. 
Um, I'm so passionate about this work. Um, and I felt that heavily in my time spent at North Carolina. I was the only black person in my class of 25, um, only black woman. And I felt that um, there's a lot of implicit bias, a lot of racism um, that people didn't even know that they were giving the things that they would say to me. Um, for example, oh, you're so pretty for a black girl or oh, you don't sound ghetto. Um, like just stuff like that, that I was always hearing and then going into clinical um, in North Carolina where there are patients that are frankly just racist and um, doctors that are just racist and that was the environment that I had to step into to be taught by them to also prove my knowledge to them so there was always this like I had a I had um, a preceptor as I was waking or waking up my heart patient, heart surgery, my cabbage as a student, behind, right behind me, they were having a discussion in the room, you know, I'm D-lining and everything. And um, he goes, you know, I think black and white people can be called the N-word. I remember. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm literally frozen, frozen. Don't even know how, like, and so that's just one situation. Stuff like that happens all the time. And so I, at that point, if you're not an African-American or a minority that has to, that's another layer that you don't even have to deal with and understand on top of the stressors of school. Mm -hmm. There's always that extra layer of, are you judging me because I'm a minority? Do you think I'm dumb because I'm brown? Um, I've had, you know, preceptors say like, oh, you're, you're a different kind. You're a different kind of one of those. I just... Yeah, like that was the environment that I stepped into all of the time. And um, there, one of the other challenges that I dealt with was a jealous, whoever it was, it could be one of you guys, who knows, um, a jealous person. It wasn't like, me. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> <It wasn't. laughs> um, making complaints to my school and complaining about my social media and how I wasn't representing the school well. Someone wrote an anonymous letter to the school and instead of my school believing me and, you know, the testing that I had to do and I was removed from clinical. And um, it was a very, very hard time for me because my whole world, this Air Force, everything could have been ripped up from underneath me. Um, all because someone sent a letter to school and it was so easy for my school to take this letter as truth and fact instead of their own school, per, their own student that they know who volunteers who speaks across the country who mentors and it was in that instant that I realized where I was and what space that I was in and how quickly someone who is jealous a hater whatever could change your life because they feel like it Mm -hmm. And um, I, looking back on it now, I went through, a, 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 I was depressed at that. Um, I started going to counseling because of it. And I realized that, you know, that was a traumatic experience. I didn't know why those things were happening to me. My counselor was like, well, that actually was traumatic. You know, trauma happens when you see your life before you changing and disappearing. And um, so that was a kind of like a darker time for me in school. Uh, I stopped going to yoga. I stopped, I look back at it now and I'm like, yeah, girl, you were really depressed. Like something was going on. Um, I was anxious. I didn't even want to walk into my school. Uh, I didn't want to, because of like how it played out, like me yeah. getting called in for a meeting. And I was, whenever there was an email, I was, didn't want to check it. Um, and so I had to go through that experience though and grow through that experience because I actually realized there was a moment where I was like, actually, you guys did me wrong. And there actually may be some legal ramifications to this. Wait a minute, let's get a lawyer. Um, so then at that moment, I kind of took my power back and I started using my voice to explain like why this was wrong and how this is a systemic type of problem and how it can affect people who look like me coming after me. 
And so I made it a duty to like really continue my work, my DMP work, um, and go to meetings. And I call I called meetings with my faculty. I called meetings with the dean because I was like, this ish is not kosher. And if you thought for a second that Aisha Ayana Allen was just gonna like sing kumbaya with you about this now that it's over and you think I'm fine, no, not this one. And so um, that 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 was a serious experience for me as well. Um, but aside from that, again, I'm just so able to say I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, it was a learning opportunity for me for um, sure. coming into a space that's unknown. I'm always on guard. You can't get me, sis. Like, <laughs> I'm good. Right. <laughs> right. And like one of my favorite quotes by um, Napoleon Hill um, is like every adversity brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. And like we've all been through adversities, but like that was the seed that was planted for you. And yep. I already know that you're going to. Yeah. yeah, like it, it yeah. changed me. It changed me for the best. I'm like, I'm actually glad I'm I'm happy for the experience. Now that yeah. I'm able to like look back on it, um, whoo, I stood in my power. Let me tell you, I made a whole PowerPoint and an hour PowerPoint for them. Girl, we'll talk about Good. it another day. <laughs> okay, yeah, for another why. Yeah. But yeah, I just yeah. I do just want to let you know that, you know, if it wasn't for you as an SRNA, first of all, telling me that I was the first black CRNA you had ever seen. Um and then I actually started following you on Instagram. I would post occasionally, but I was going through yeah. a divorce. I was going through like a lot of my own personal stuff then. Right. And and I didn't really think the world cared about what I had to say about being a CRNA or anything. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I started following you after, you know, um, I had precepted you and yeah. just saw you posting and like encouraging others and just showing your face that I even got the courage oh, to do it. So I just want you to know that. <laughs> Thank you. No, yeah. like that is so huge to me. That's all I ever wanted, like was to change our community, especially as nurses, mm -hmm. like it can get that bad rap. And um, I feel like all of us on here are changing that. Everyone who's like on this live, um, mm -hmm. we're able to change the face of nursing and really change what it means to be a nurse. So yeah. shout out to all of us. What, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're an Aries too, just like me. So we have that that going. For yes. Us. <laughs> right. Hashtag Aries. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have like ten minutes left. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's so many. <laughs> I know. Hey y'all. <laughs> We're gonna have to schedule another one of these. I know, right? I'm gonna we try I'm so gonna many try times. I'm going to, I know, but I'm glad we were finally able to. Um, do you have any tips on how to negotiate a contract for stipends? If oh, the, I can't see the whole question. Um, like in the military, there's no negotiating. Just that. <laughs> if that's what they meant, but. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Considering fluctuations in the oh sorry sorry do you see, no, no, do you see questions on there oh no, go ahead yeah go ahead okay so what are some downsides to the air force i think i kind of talked about that earlier like your life your the needs of the air force come before you but air force takes care of their people it's not the that's why i chose the air force and not the army or the navy i don't do boats and i'm claustrophobic um air force really takes care of their people i have a sauna on base like you know, there's a pool. Nels is about to get a swim up pool with a bar. There's a what? golf course here. Yes. yes. You live in better yes. than me. <laughs> right. I was like, oh, I chose a really good base. Yes. Wow. Um, All right. Somebody I'm wants to know Are you worried about the political climate um, as somebody in the military? I'm always worried about the political climate. Um, I can't really talk about, like, politics. I can't talk about the president. I can't talk about the election. Um, but that does always play a role. Like, my life, like, that's my, the president is my commander in chief. So I, he run like, he's my boss, ultimately. Um, so I'm always kind of worried about, like, what happens. Um, I know people who are deployed right now who were deployed 
um, and immediately based off of the, what just happened. Um, but I also, I signed up for this and, um, I don't know. I'm just, I don't fear things. I, it sounds kind of cocky or whatever to you. That means you're kind of like not understanding what I'm saying. I, I don't walk in fear. Um, my life is what it's going to be. And, um, I like new experiences if I just mm -hmm. sum it up. <laughs> yeah. When, when you walk in a fear based mentality, that's an automatically lower vibration. So right. every, every, that's why neg more negative things happen to you if you walk in fear. Yep. So you, you yeah. really have to walk in faith because that's a higher level and Woo! higher frequency. So. It. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all don't hear her today. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, if you see any when you're scrolling, you can. Okay. Are there any skills you recommend mastering or courses that would be beneficial to make yourself more competitive as a new grad applying into the ICU? Okay, you might not like my answer, but I'm gonna be honest. Um, no, there's nothing <laughs> like to me, like as a new grad compared to another new grad, you're still new. Um, I think the only thing you can do specifically is to be yourself and be a person that is teachable and willing to learn and be an asset to their team, not a person that's going to be a gossip, to be negative, um, someone who wants to learn and be a positive impact on their unit. I think that's what you can do. Um, skills. I didn't have any skills as a new grad, so I can't really help you on that. Like, I didn't know what the heck I was doing as a nurse, to be honest. So yeah. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. <laughs> I just think being receptive to learning um, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, doing your work, doing, you know, when you come into an ICU, especially, like, I remember my CBICU book, like, just to study this was, thick. like, this thick, you know, Same. so you're not just going to work and learning it that way. You also have to do the studying, and we had classes and stuff, too, but you know, you you had to you had to study as well. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, just being persistent, not being lazy. Please know that none of us did this overnight. None of no. us graduated high school and became CRNAs right away. Like it was yes. years of ten years for me. Work it's ten years. Yeah, you know, people think it's just some quick thing, like, and they want quick answers. Y'all know I can't stand that. If you have been looking at my page recently, I've been calling people out about this because it's something else. Let's talk about it. Um, there is a lack of, what's the word? Like self-accountability with what you need to learn as far as like getting the basics down for applying to school. Like, why are you asking me what the deadline is for the school that you want to apply to? I have a real problem with that. I have a serious issue with that. And it, it's more than like, oh, it's annoying. It's you want to be in charge of someone's life and you mm -hmm. can't critically think? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. And so yeah. like, I'm a real, I've been really kind of stern about it because it's important for people to take some time to look things up. Like, yeah. spend some time. Especially <laughs> with the amount of resources that you have made available Dr. Bolt, Everyone. Nurse Nell, myself, PJ, Diversity Dante. CRNA, Doc Flanagan. Come on, Teddy, <laughs> Bolt, Rihanna. We spend so much time. And Google, yes, and Google. Hey. Start with Google, if nothing else. Don't and inbox me like, asking right. how much does a CRNA make or was CRNA school hard? Google. Now, the thing is, if you come asking me a personalized question, Aisha, how much money, I'll, I'll tell you once I figure out, like, you know, like, how much did you notice that you make, like, personalize it. But if people are asking me, what, what advice do you have? My YouTube channel is full mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. You know, ask me something. I don't know mm -hmm. how to respond, you know, like, what do you want advice about? How to study? How to cook? Mm -hmm. Like, what? You know? Right. Um, anyways. Let me get off my soapbox. All right. um, no, but yeah. I'm with There's you. One other and question. I haven't been I haven't oh. been doing this nearly as long as you. And I, I, I feel it. So um yeah. Yes, like, just just so yeah. you know. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I retake these lives so that and post them to YouTube so that they're there for y'all. I don't have to do that. There's been many of right. times where I'm like, I'm not doing it anymore because right. y'all gonna come to me with these crazy questions still, and I just had to yes. re-record. Girl, no. <laughs> All right. No. <laughs> we have four we minutes four left. Minutes. I know. Look, I can talk about it because I'm like, y'all, are y'all serious? Someone asked me if I was in the Air Force. <laughs> I saw that. And you were like, are you serious? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, y'all. And then it. I also do want to say, again, bringing it back to Instagram, I'm a real person. This is not a brand. I'm not a fraud. I'm allowed to have an emotion and, and reaction to these questions being asked of me. So if you think I'm harsh, Sorry. <laughs> and not only that, but if you think if you think how we're coming off is harsh, get up into an OR and go ask a preceptor a question. Oh, what's that drug do? You're getting sent right out. You're and out. they're gonna and they're gonna email your program director. <laughs> um, so and so came to clinical and did not know yep. what supplemental choline was. You're out. Yep. You're out. You're out. So that. And you want to know what your issue is? You didn't ask to go to the bathroom and to go look it up. Okay, that was your. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, I know we have three minutes. I'm gonna answer this one question yeah. real quick. Okay. Um, All right. Is there a difference between cases, patient populations that you see working in the Air Force? Most of the time, yes. But I'm also at Nellis Air Force Base. I'm gonna make a video about it. This is the largest air like hospital in the entire Air Force. Is about to have a trauma center the only trauma bay in the Air Force hospitals. Um, we're probably in the next few years going to be getting cardiac surgery. We do spines here. We do ortho. We do gyno. Like, the facility that I'm at, I'm seeing all of these things. Now, other ones, you may just be doing a lot of OB and a lot of knees. Um, smaller, like, three, four ORs. Um, um, So yeah, that's a big, that's, and they're, they're healthy. I'm taking care of a lot of healthy patients. Mm -hmm. um, well, those smaller facilities are healthy. But for me, I'm taking a lot of care of veterans too. Like there's a joint mm -hmm. venture with the VA. So um, yeah, it's just, just different for me here at Nellis to answer that. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm seeing. All right. Final parting words. What, what yeah. would you, what would you like to say? Um, just to tie in these questions real quick, um, stay in contact with people that you think could help you non-selfishly, but in a selfish way that can help you, um, either learn from them, write a recommendation, you know, um, network, learn from others, be willing to learn, be coachable, leave your ego at the door in any environment that you step in. And I don't mean ego as in like egotistical. I mean like the true ego. When you look it up in a psychology book, go look it up. Leave your ego at the door um, and approach every system, um, every situation with love, um, how you interact with people. Um, and I really ask yourself, am I coming with love? Is this going to help somebody? And um, I think that's it. Just take care of one another. Be happy. Be kind. Um, and yeah. This is a journey that I think anyone can do. It's not oversaturated. Someone asked me that. And, and um, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you.